Hey guys, I'm Chris from Creator. And this is Colin from Creator. Before we get started, um, we did want to thank, again, New Horizon Mall. They're the ones that are making it possible. And the reason why we're doing this, everything we're doing, all these bills, these box to moxes, all these contests we're running, is a big lead up to August 28th to 30th, which is BuildCon. Build so it's going to be a really great, huge uh, virtual Lego convention. Yeah. It's going to be live streamed. We're going to have uh, some in-mall activities, or rather displays, mm -hmm. from a bunch of builders as well. So again, if you guys haven't heard about it, um, keep tuned, uh, stay tuned rather, look for more information. We're going to be talking about it a lot more. But again, big thanks to New Horizon Mall. So what are we doing this this week, Chris, or what are we doing this episode? Well, if you guys are new here, uh, every week we do uh, From Box to Mox, and we take a set, both yeah, of us, and we build something out of it. So this week is a special because we did something different. Colin and I had two different sets, and I had the Safari Off-Roader. And I had the Pizza Van. So both of us <laughs> used these sets and built something different out of it to match this week's theme, which is... They see me rolling. Build or something with wheels. Something with wheels. Yeah. So this was a very tough challenge because we didn't really have a way of seeing who's got what and in terms of like parts. So it's very, it's going to be a very different one. It's definitely going to be unique. Usually we have the exact same pieces. This week we don't. So a lot of times I'm building, I'm thinking in my head, oh, I wonder what Chris is going to utilize this for. But as Chris mentioned, we have two completely different sets this time, which means our part selection was completely different. Yep. So it's going to be really unique and interesting this week to see what we've got. Now, we did challenge you guys to build with wheels as well, but we wanted to do something different that didn't have a car. So build something with wheels, but different. Think outside the box. Yeah. So I hope that we did the same thing. We thought outside the box. We're going to show you guys. But before that, we did have a special announcement to make. Uh, this week is a very special week. It marks season one is over for From Box to Mox and our weekly building contest. Sure. So you, we know that you guys have been building so much and we've seen the co community come together, build, but I think it's time for a little break. We do have a bit of catch up to do, especially with sending out the prizes. And yeah, we're gonna do something something special for season two, which is coming up in a week from now. Yeah, so like you mentioned, we'll just take a week off in terms of the box to mox and your building. Um, but yeah, we'll be back the week after with Vengeance and a lot more themes and yeah. builds for you guys to, to build along with. But what we've got now is our box to mox yes. reveal. So maybe let's just jump into that and see what we built. Okay. Chris, bring yours up as well. <laughs> So the Wait, can I just take mine out? Or? Just take it out, just take it out. Okay. So oh. it's... Okay. So it's ironic because we just said let's not build something with just, just wheels like a car. Yeah. But we, I kind of did. I'm not sure the story behind yours, but mine's got a bit of a story to it. And it's, it looks simplistic, but we'll get to that. Chris, just a quick overview. Just for a this. quick overview. And we're going to jump into the, to the deep dive close up in a second here. Chris, so, give us an overview. So I had the Safari off-roader one more time and had a lot of white as well as the stripes as well as the characters. I had a tree and a panther so I didn't use any of those. Um, as soon as I saw this, I had this odd idea. I was stumped. I had this odd idea of building a roller skate. Oh, it's a roller skate. Totally. Right? That's so cool. So I wanted wow. to do something completely different from what I've been doing. And I don't know if I can hold this up to the camera, but oh, it's yeah, a, it's my roller skate. It's 100% a roller skate. Um, oh, there are some things that are still very fragile with it. The Griebling. The Griebling. Um, but those are side decorations and I wanted it to almost be like a festive feel. So yeah, it has all got, the components. It's got an awesome festive feel. We'll get into the details again, but For sure. there's laces, there's the toe stop. It's 100% yeah. roller skate. That's what a what a cool idea. <laughs> so that's what I came up with for this week's challenge. So now I'm a little bit embarrassed because we talked about not building a car, but I built one. Oh, but that's, okay. that's not really the, the the point behind it. So the did you did you name yours? Is it called the roller skate? I'm or? just gonna call it the roller skate. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mine's called um, Scrapyard Nightmares. Scrapyard Nightmares. Yeah. So Ooh, there's a story. There's a story. Obviously, we like stories. So we have this hero character as usual. Okay. She's on her double scooter. This is like normally like a pizza delivery 
Um, but, <laughs> but, double but, but double scooter, so you know you can get double the pizzas delivered. Nice. Uh, don't worry about the, the logistics behind why it's a double scooter. Okay. It looks cool. But she was told by her boss that they need to go pick up a new battery from the junkyard. Um, and so she comes in and we have our main build here. This is an old truck. It's, uh, Ooh, okay. you can see some of the yellow paint that's kind of like showing through. There's a lot of rust on it that I tried Ooh. to depict. Um, but basically without going into detail, it's not really the truck that's... <gasps> it transforms! Yes! So it actually, what it is, it's not junk on the back. And again, we'll, we'll get into the details. Awesome! But wow. What we have... We have a, is an a Autobot. Is it transformable? Is it an Autobot? Well, yes. it's not anything specific in the Transformers universe. Yes. And so now it's actually protecting the battery. <laughs> so that's that was my kind of theme. I wanted to do something uh, simplistic in terms of like the design, but have a little bit of, of story and fun behind it. So. That's so unreal. I'm so that I love Max. <laughs> Bless you, man. This is so awesome. I'm so excited. We're gonna go dive into this a little bit more. I want to see all all the details in this. Yeah. So let's let's cut. We're gonna zoom in, and we can go into a little bit more detail. So follow us there. All right, guys. So Colin here with my build. Again, it was called Scrapyard Nightmares. So again, there's a little bit of a story to it. So I'm gonna go back through it, go through the story again, and then give a little bit more details while we're looking at the build. So as usual, we have our hero character. She came with the set, obviously. She was the one who was buying a pizza in the pizza van. We didn't end up using the pizza maker himself. He probably could have been in the scrapyard somewhere. If I had more time to build like a full scrapyard, I would have, but this is what we got so far. So again, she's um, out on an errand. She's basically been told that she needs to pick up a new battery for one of their vehicles. And so they heard that this crazy old and ghetto scrapyard has one of these specific batteries. And so she's on this eerie quest. You can imagine it's kind of dark and gloomy to get this battery. So she arrives to the scrapyard and what she finds is she can see the battery. This is what she's come here to try and locate. And we have an old sort of decrepit truck. It's tried to be dictating what like the rust and colors might be. So there's yellows coming through, old gray parts of the metal. We have this earth red, this dark maroon to indicate maybe some rust. So it's obviously been sort of sitting here for a while. So she's here and she wants to pick up this battery. But again, as we mentioned, it's this scrapyard nightmare. So it's not gonna be so simple as to just get the battery and leave. So as she, as she goes, she can see there's some garbage in the back of this truck and, and she can hear some creaking and some, some metal sort of scraping against each other on the mm -hmm. inside. And it's, again, it's sort of that nightmare feeling that builds up, things kind of like darken around it. And, and as she gets just close enough, it transforms into, again, a thing of her nightmares. So the bottom can come down, these wheels open up and lock into place. This central axle portion of what would be like the drivetrain opens up. And that thing that was garbage, or at least she thought, comes in, attaches on the top, and becomes the head of the, the scrapyard beast. Gasp. Gasp. And that battery that she was so desperately looking for is now in the middle of this thing's arched body. Let me just set her up. So this is sort of the, the idea. I wanted something that transformed. I didn't want there to be just a stagnant vehicle. We didn't want people to submit stagnant vehicles. Like, we can all build that. And if you did, that's not a problem, but we wanted to do something a little bit differently here. So, mine transformed a bit. The articulation within the build itself isn't the highest, but with the amount of pieces and the types of hinges that we had, it was kind of good enough for me. But there's a little bit more. So she, she actually goes to turn and, and run. But what happens is the back portion here which is actually the seat portion, opens up as well. And with, I guess, magnetic or not magical, but supernatural powers, her, her scooters, they get absorbed into the actual beast itself, turning into its backpack or maybe jetpack style. 
it's hard to clip these in without making it, making an error. Oh, wow. And so now it's become like a, a backpack for it. And so she has no way she could possibly escape. And she's left in the nightmare scenario. So let's talk about, about the build a little bit. We can stop talking about the storyline and we can dive into the articulation and kind of what my ideas were when I was trying to build this. So I started the build off in the on the front portion. So if you remember when we talked about ships, I always started the back for ships. For this car, I started at the front. I actually just really liked the shape that I decided or that I ended up going with. Uh, a nice flat top, used these uh, rigid two by ones as uh, like the grills on the front. The lights were blue. And then from there, it was trying to figure out how I wanted this thing to be articulated. I originally planned these wheel pieces to come out in two points of articulation. I wanted to come out once and then twice again, and they could have been used as like almost shoulder pads. However, as I was going through the build, I just realized that the amount of pieces that I had to be able to create articulation points was pretty limited. And I didn't want to get through to the end of the build and have already used up everything at the front half because then I would have been left in a really awkward position where I either have to forego any articulation in the back or I would have to go back and take apart what I had already designed and what I already knew fit together really well. And then I'd be left in this point anyway. So I opted to leave the articulation relatively simplistic and focus on the overall shape at the end. So if you remember the fire fang set that we did, I ended up with a pretty similar, uh, I ended up with a pretty similar shape and it was kind of like an arched, sort of like a C shape to try and portray something menacing. And so in my efforts to make something unique this time with the transformer, I also happened to <laughs> to go back on an old on an old building technique or an old, old building style as well. So, but still, you kind of get that C shape, which kind of engulfs, engulfs the character. I wanted to make it have that shape because it's a little bit more menacing. Also, if you think about photography or if you think about um, like illustration, you want to lead the eye when you're doing any sort of scene. And so having a shape like this, you have a point of the character it follows around or it follows around in the C shape and then it's looking down at our character. So it leads the eye in a good circle. So it's just a natural way to, to build something. So I wanted to keep that shape in mind. So I forego any extra articulation on the sides and just left it uh, the way that I had it here. Unfortunately, I really wanted to be able to have the head built into the articulation so that it actually just came out with it. I didn't feel like after I got this front portion done, there was any real way for me to build that into this specific build without taking a significant amount of time and effort that I just didn't have at that point. And so a way that you can cheat is by <laughs> just creating a story for it. And so what I did is I just built the head through it in the back and then just called it junk. So in the story, it looks like a piece of junk. And so it just adds a little bit of extra like, oh, it's actually not junk, it's the head of the of the monster itself. So just a little bit of a cheat if you need to, if you can't make your your initial plans work out. And then afterwards, I wanted to do something with these scooters because I didn't want them to just be, I don't know, it just seemed too convenient that you could just ride this thing around. And they had these cool clip, uh, clip pieces on the bottom that I didn't end up having to use because I decided to double up on this. And as soon as I thought of making a backpack for this, I knew that I wanted to do uh, use the double scooter. So at the beginning of the video, and I was like, yeah, don't worry about why it's a double scooter. Like, why would there possibly be need for it? It's because as a backpack, or like, like you can imagine this being like a jetpack, like psh, it makes more sense to have, to have it as a double. So that's why I decided to do that. But again, that sense. yeah, we didn't utilize the clips on the bottom. And so I made this seat, which technically works. I wouldn't call it the most comfortable ride in the world, <laughs> but it, it does, she does fit inside of it. But I gave that a bit of articulation as well. And the seat base area here basically just clips in on those bottom clips. Well, actually clips in this way, but you, know, you get the idea. So that was kind of cool. But yeah, that was the basic overall uh, idea of the build. It was definitely a little bit tougher this time around. I felt like artistically, 
not drained, but four weeks is definitely a lot. So I'm glad that we're gonna be taking a break, not only for our sake, but for your sakes as well. You can get revitalized and come back even stronger in the fifth week. Super pumped to see what that theme is gonna be about, because I don't even know. But yeah, this is the junk or the scrapyard nightmare uh, and my build. Nice, quick, simple one this week. Let's jump over to Chris's and he can dive a little bit deeper into the build that he made. Hey guys, this is Chris and I'm back with my From Box to Mox build this week. Uh, I decided to do something a little bit more different and went with a, a life, uh, life object sculpture. This one has a lot of intricate techniques to it because the theme is build something that rolls or has wheels. So I wanted to incorporate the wheels into a practical object. And we had eight wheels in total. However, I wanted to just use four. So I went with looking at my colors and looking at um, the base colors that I had. I had gray, dark gray, tan, and white. So using those colors, I just tried to imagine what a life lifestyle object that would be and how do I incorporate these interesting curves so th these are the ones I wanted to point out this curve right here and also these large curves so I had tons of whites and I also had lots of tiles as well so a two by three tile and you'll see them a few of them scattered so I did get a lot a lot of these tiles in my set so I wanted to incorporate like a build um, that had some of those interesting shapes to it and this is what I arrived with. I started the idea actually with this little guy. So as you guys know, if you guys are familiar with a retro roller blade, this is the stopper. It's what you use to stop. Um, and starting with the base, this really started the whole thing because now it was possible to get that main part. I redesigned this many times, but I found out that if you take a camera, oops, that popped off, <laughs> a clip and a camera, you get the right angle for a stopper. So it's as simple as clipping that on. Oops. Oh, great. Now it's not working. All the time during presentation. Oops. You'll see lots of little things fall apart. This is probably not my most um, strongest build. But there you go, there's your stopper. <laughs> now, moving on to the base. I'm gonna slowly move this. You do have the mechanics mechanisms for a roller blade. I really tried to make it as practical and as lifestyle, life size as possible. So there are some components that are working with it. Now, I'm gonna take this apart just to give you guys an idea of what this is consisted of. A lot of, oops, a lot of techniques are used in this build. So snots, snot technique, and also um, there's a little bit of brick math involved. So I'm gonna take away the shoelace. This is the shoelace that I had. So I tried to incorporate, try to show laces and bi brick built them actually. If you guys can see, I used a bunch of clips and I used these black circles to illustrate the loops that um, you make when you're tying a shoelace. So I'm gonna put that down. And also this is gonna be a part that you're gonna be able to see inside. So this is actually really rough. I built this up so that this section right here lines up perfectly right over here on the blue and they just flush. It flushes so that when you squeeze this build or handle it in any way or any fashion, um, everything is just locked in. So there's no, well, I'm hoping that there's no way of breaking it, but there are some things in place where you can um, see how it protects the sides of the build. I'm not sure how, how clear it's going to be, but we'll try our best to illustrate it. Now, this is just for decoration. You have like a little holiday feel to it. Um, you have uh, some, some of those uh, Christmas feel to it. Now, here, moving to the front, you'll also see how I created some sort of steps and use trans-clear parts to be able to slide this section in. So it should just kind of rest on there just like that. There is um, 
there are some things where they just kind of rest. So it's, it's gravity thing. It's kind of like a technique that um, I use from Han Solo and I'm just kind of reiterating it. Now it's funny because these builds that we're doing, we are picking up techniques and we're not gonna call them our signature techniques, but as you do these contests, as you do these builds with us, we're hoping that you guys are learning new techniques and picking up some things that you like. Every builder has their own style of building. While Colin and I are discovering or rediscovering techniques that we've used before, it, it's really fun to just see how your style comes out whenever you do these um, tough challenges. Now, one thing I wanted to point out, which is something I unlocked, uh, this is something that I've never done before, but basically I, I built upside down. So I actually got a bunch of one by two slopes that are inverted. So I had eight of them and I wanted to create that curve piece at the front to get the toe. And however, how do I do that with inverted? The only way to do it was to build upside down and using these tiles and they just slide in perfectly. So having that said, this is something that I've never done before. And now that it's it's in place, you notice that it's seamless. However, from the front, there are, there are some, um, some things that are different, but we're limited with the parts. However, I can do this with any other build and it just fits like a jigsaw puzzle. Building upside down and it's almost like a key. So it just fits right in. Now it gives me that shape that I need and also it allowed me to do the rest of the build where it just kind of fits in all together. And now it's funny because one of the things that I always think about is how do I transport this? So that's why a lot of my builds are modular and thinking about how to transport it, especially going to different Lego shows comes in handy. That's from my experience. Now, when you guys are going to build con, if you guys are in Alberta, think about this because you don't want to be building your whole entire build on site and it's going to be a difficult thing. You want to be able to just drop it off and show it to everybody. So that's always been the thing for me. I've always built it modularly and yeah, this is my first ever uh, life object sculpture. This is my rollerblade for our week four challenge. Woo! Man, that was awesome. Thank you so much, Chris, for going in depth in your roller skates. Uh, it was super cool. I definitely learned some interesting things. I really like this, <laughs> this like friction building upside down technique. Yeah. Really cool. Again, if you guys were able to see the details in the up close video, take a look at these shoelaces. It's so simple. I love the piece that you use at the very end. It looks just like a the, the part of the metal piece on a shoelace that you would put through the holes. But I really like his too as well, guys. Like I know we're just talking about each other's builds, but the fact that Colin made something transform. I have not been able to do that with any mechs yet, but because of his build, I'm inspired to do something like a mech that transforms. It's going to be fun. I really like the concept that he put out because um, you do have a, just a bunch of like vehicles, but then there's something that meets more than the eye. What's the saying for transformer? More than meets the eye. Right? Are we allowed to say that or are we going to get sued? Uh, no, no copyright strike just on kidding. that one, please. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's really. Like that's how Lego should be. There should be surprises. You guys should be surprising us. And we really try to surprise you guys with some of this. So oftentimes when we build, we always think of the audience. How can we make and help the community improve their technique? And I mean, some of these concepts have been around. We're just telling you guys a whole different story. Yeah, it's awesome. So something you may have noticed while you were listening to this video mm. is that uh, <laughs> the audio might be a little bit uh, different. There's actually a bunch of construction happening right outside. Sorry, so guys. It's, it's literally my next door neighbors are doing their yard. So I apologize for any noise. It would be really nice if we had our own recording studio. Oh, some, I think, I hope that comes up soon. We, we have like all this, like all this stuff to do and just <laughs> no place to really do it. So you'll probably awesome. notice we're just doing it in my living room. So sorry about the noise, but I'm sure you guys can, can bear with it. Well, um, that being said, Let's remind you guys about what you guys are winning this week for season one. Yeah, what's in it for you guys? What's in it for you guys. So these are the leftover sets that we had from uh, when we rolled the dice. So we got the ice cream truck. This is the forest. What is this one? 
Forest Tractor, and the last one, Colin? It's called the Snow Groomer, and if you remember from the first video, this was the, if you roll a one, you have to use it, because there's no actual wheels in it, so it would have made it pretty tough. But a really cool set to build for you guys, and a lot of cool, unique pieces that you guys could utilize. But this is, these are the prizes for this week, and we hope that you guys um, continue building, even though we are gonna take a week off. Don't worry guys, we will be releasing some content. It's gonna be something different, something that we made just for you guys in response to the growing community that we have. We do wanna grow, so if you guys have a chance, check out our Instagram, check out our YouTube channel. Be sure to just always help us out and give us a thumbs up and comment down below. If you guys like some of our builds, if you guys have any comments or feedback for us, we wanna get better as we go. And we're just starting out and we wanna let you guys um, help us grow. Yeah, definitely. Looking forward to hearing all of your feedback. Uh, again, keep tuned and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.